we will continue our discussion on canonical transformations in this video and i want to return to poisson brackets that we were discussing some time back so let me remind you what poisson bracket is so if you are given two functions f and g which are functions of the canonical coordinates q and p okay i'm not assuming that it's only one dimensional system you could have n dimensional so your q will run from q1 q2 so and so forth to q n okay so let's say oh um there are two functions f and g then i can construct this quantity which is called poisson bracket which is the following okay they could as i said they, these are um i'm talking general of n dimensional system so your k runs from 1 to n and there's a summation over k implied here you have f g g f that's what poisson bracket is and it's an antisymmetric quantity and also recall that if you take q j and q k okay two of the coordinates or two of the conjugate momenta which is let's say pj pk then their poisson brackets are zero however if you take one of them to be a coordinate and the other one to be a conjugate momentum then this is delta I, jk delta jk so unless j is equal to k this will be zero okay and when j is equal to k then q j comma p j will be 1 okay and these are called fundamental poisson brackets okay I'll give you a small exercise to do. So you determine the Poisson brackets formed from the components of angular momentum. So mm, determine Poisson brackets formed from the components of angular momentum. so you can take uh, cartesian coordinates and corresponding conjugate momenta construct the angular momentum l is r cross p and then calculate this so let's say by l i denote the angular momentum so l i l j r these components then show that if you construct the poisson bracket you are going to get this which means for example for if for i you have 1 j you have 2 then it will be on the left hand side l 1 comma 2 and on the right hand side it will become epsilon 1 2 3 3 3 3 okay which epsilon 1 2 3 will be 1 so it will become l 3 on the right hand side so please show this i will um, state a theorem i will not prove it you can prove it yourself or uh have a look in one of the standard books and here is the theorem um it states that poisson brackets are invariant 
under canonical transformations. Okay, so no matter what set of coordinates you are using, a Poisson bracket's value doesn't change. Okay, so here is a theorem. R invariant under canonical transformations. <clears throat> okay, so one consequence of this is that if you look at the fundamental Poisson bracket okay, here and here all the partial derivatives in constructing this are with respect to the coordinates small q and small p. Okay. Let me emphasize that thing by putting a subscript here. So <coughs> this is one. So here I am looking at some one dimensional system. Okay, It has only one coordinate q. And this, we know that it is 1. Now what holds true is that if you were to express the function small q or the coordinate small q in terms of capital Q and capital P, which are obtained by a canonical transformation, similarly for the small p, and if you were to evaluate this, this time taking the partial derivatives with respect to capital Q and capital P, you are going to get the same thing because Poisson brackets are invariant. Okay. Now this can be used to test whether a given transformation is canonical. Okay, even without knowing what the generating function is. So you don't have to start to first figure out what the generating function is. Just by doing this test, you can figure out whether the transformation or whether the new sets of coordinates that are given to you are canonical, whether they are going to satisfy canonical equations of motion. I can give you a simple example and that example will be based on what we did here for the harmonic oscillator. So let's do um, let's do the test on the capital Q and capital P here, which we had. So here, mm, somewhere here. Anyway, let me write it down here. So uh, you can go back and check whether what I'm saying is correct. So a case of, of harmonic oscillator. Okay, so first of all, let me put m is equal to omega is equal to 1. Okay, I have put everything to be 1. If I do so, then my q is 2p sine of q and small p is 2p in the square root cos of q. Okay, and let's... Uh, find out the Poisson bracket Q comma P using this, okay? The partial derivatives now will be, will be with respect to capital Q and capital P. So what is this quantity? This is delta Q over delta capital of Q, delta P over delta capital of P minus Okay, if you evaluate this, you will find that you get cos square q plus sine square q, and which you know is identically 1. So, we have seen that our theorem is indeed working, and this also proves that um, the coordinates which we found were canonical. Okay. If we if we 
assume that the theorem is valid. Okay, let me give another example again with the harmonic oscillator. Okay, this was example. Now this time what I will do is I will do the opposite thing. Harmonic oscillator. Now let's invert. Let's invert these relations and instead write in terms of capital P, uh, instead express capital P and capital Q in terms of the old coordinates Q and P. Remember these were, as I was uh, telling you, these were, these are angular and radial coordinates and these are more like your Cartesian X and Y. So if you invert, you will get um, the following, you'll get Q tan inverse Q over P and capital P equal to Q square plus P square over 2. Okay, So just divide this and this equation, you'll get a tan Q and then you take the inverse so that you get this relation and and you sum the take the square of this, take the square of this and sum, sum them up, you'll get this one. Okay. Okay, now again, let's check uh, whether the following holds true. So if I take start with capital Q and capital P, which if I were to evaluate, this I know will be one. But now let's evaluate this using small q and small p. Okay, so now you take the partial derivatives. Let me let me write it down. It's fairly trivial. So this is what we want to calculate. Check that. I'm just writing down so that we can immediately see that my claim is correct. That's what you get by taking the partial derivative. Similarly for this one you'll get P. This one you'll get Q. And this one will give you P square. Okay, that's what you're going to get. And when you plug it in here, the expression here would be delta Q over delta Q, delta P over delta P minus del over del Q of capital P, del over del P of capital Q. When you plug these derivatives in, in here, you will see that you will immediately get this equal to 1. Okay, that's uh, another way of looking at the transformations to be canonical. Okay, so it makes sense to drop these because no matter which set of coordinates you use, okay, you are always going to get the same answer. Okay, so uh, I would stop this lecture here. In fact, the entire uh, course will end here. Uh, nevertheless, a lot is still left to be learned in this uh, subject. And we cannot cover much more in these 30 hours. So I will strongly recommend that you look at those standard textbooks, which I had mentioned in the beginning. For example, the book by Handin Finch, Goldstein, and the book by Arnold, okay, Landau and Lifshitz, uh, the book by Pars. So you can uh, find a lot more material um, in this subject. And I would also encourage you to solve exercising in problems that are given in this book so that um, you develop a stronger understanding of the subject and 
with this i would like to wish all of you the best for your exams and i hope that you all have um, enjoyed learning this subject i definitely enjoyed giving these lectures so thank you for uh, attending this course and i wish you all the best for your exams and for your academic future okay thank you